Hey everyone, I'm Jason O'Dell, and uh, welcome back to, um, it's been a while, so I have a little tip today um, about landscape photography. We're going to use um, Lightroom and we're going to use Photoshop. And what I want to talk about today is the challenge of shooting the moon in landscapes. And I'm not talking about taking pictures of the full moon with your telephoto lens, you can do that. I'm talking about situations like what we have here where you're shooting in twilight, the moon is relatively small in the frame because I'm using a wide angle lens. And what happens is we have a, a total exposure nightmare. Uh, in order to expose uh, my scene, I, I really have to blow out the moon. I have no choice. Um, this was an image that I captured in South Dakota recently. Um, you can try to, to underexpose this image, um, but if in expose for the moon. Uh, if you do that, though, you're going to risk getting a lot of noise in the shadows. Um, you can try HDR, but what I found is with HDR, it just doesn't really work well for the moon because if you if you look, if we zoom in here on, on the moon itself, you see how it blows out. There's halos around here. If there's any kind of clouds um, in the sky at all, you're going to get these artifacts. So it's a real problem to deal with the moon in a landscape, and typically the answer is just let it blow out. Or, or make some kind of compromise. Well, there's another thing you can do, and it requires a little bit of forethought in the field. So when I was out in the field uh, this particular time in South Dakota, I thought, well, what, why don't I try to do some exposure bracketing? So I captured a second image prior to the first. So here's the, the first image that I captured was simply exposed for the moon. And you can see that this entire image, the only thing we've got here is the moon, and it, it's exposed pretty reasonably, okay? And then I have my other image, which is my normal exposure. So we went from a change from, um, you know, a three second exposure to capture the landscape from a quarter of a second exposure here to capture the moon. So that's a huge, huge number of, of uh, stops. Um, and I don't care what kind of camera you have, you probably don't have that much dynamic range. So what we're gonna do is we wanna figure out a way to merge these images together. So we're going to use Photoshop, um, but I'm going to tinker with this a little bit. So if you've got Adobe Lightroom, you've got Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both images. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit in and down the bottom here, open as layers in Photoshop. That's going to open both of these images as a stack of layers in Photoshop. I was using a tripod. They're going to be aligned. Don't have any issues here. So we just have to get these images to load in. Okay, so I'm over here in Photoshop now and I've got my layers panel open. I've got both of my images. You can see I have um, these two layers and they're in the same document. Now, in the past, we've talked about compositing the moon. I could try to do that here, but I'm gonna run into a problem. If I were to just switch the blending mode, say, to lighten, you'd see that the bright blown out moon here in the bottom image is completely washing out anything from my first image. So that doesn't work. The other thing you might think of is, well, what about masking it out? You can try that, but sometimes those selections can be really challenging. So I, what I wanna do first is I wanna get rid of all of the blown out moon from the first frame. So I'm gonna hide the dark layer, the top layer here, by clicking the little eyeball in the layers panel. And I'm going to go into and select my bottom layer, which is the landscape. And I'm going to switch to whatever tool you want, but I'm going to use a lasso tool, the L for lasso. And I'm just going to select the entire moon. Okay. And then I'm going to replace this. You can do it a couple different ways. You can use the patch tool, but I'm, um, you know, healing brush, but I'm going to go ahead and just use content aware fill. So I'm going to go file. Um, oh, excuse, I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go content aware fill from the edit menu. And that brings up Photoshop's new content aware uh, fill dialog. This was released um, not that long ago. You can see that just with the default settings, it wipes it out pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then control or command D to deselect that area. So now the moon is gone. I can go back to my dark layer and let's try the lighten blending mode and boom, there it is. There's the moon. Now, if you don't like the way the lighten blending mode works, you can try other blending modes. 
So for example, overlay, well, that makes everything really dark. Um, screen, that's not too bad either. And, you know, play with the opacity or the blending. So screen or lighten if your image is very dark. Now, if you don't have a dark image, uh, you could make a second copy of your original file if it was exposed to more or less preserve the moon, recover the highlights. But I like this method better. It works. From here, I can either flatten this, save the layers, finish it off, and return to Lightroom. So that's your tip for sh uh, a way to work with a challenging exposure with the moon using Lightroom and Photoshop as well a little bit of a awareness in the field for landscape photography. Until next time, I'm Jason O'Dell, and don't forget to subscribe and check out my website at luminescentphoto.com. Thanks.